Deciding that you're ready for a change in your child's sleep hygiene is a huge decision to make. And I'm so glad that you've landed on my channel to help you decide what sleep training method is going to be best for your child and your family. As previously discussed in this video over here, I've already talked about how to decide which sleep training method is best for your family. But in this video, I'm going to dive really deep into the top four sleep training methods that are going to help your child learn to fall asleep independently and sleep through the night. My name is Missy Yano. I'm the owner of Slumber and Bloom. I'm your mom life bestie. I'm a pediatric sleep consultant and potty training coach. If you love hearing tips and tricks on sleep training, potty training, and all things motherhood, then this is the place for you. Subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video. Now deciding that it's time to sleep train your baby may feel foreign to some parents. It may feel completely unnatural to train your child. However, no matter what you are doing with your child to teach your child how to sleep at night, you are sleep training. The term sleep training has a very negative association in the parenthood world. And I am here to change the idea that sleep training equals cry it out. It doesn't, and it doesn't have to mean that you're closing your child's door, leaving them to cry it out until tomorrow morning. If you're a mom struggling emotionally with all these changes that are taking place in your life within the first year of your baby's life, there are so many changes. But if you're struggling with any of these changes, I made motherhood affirmation cards specifically for you. Head down to the link in the description box down below and download my motherhood affirmation cards. Print them out, laminate them, whatever you wanna do, but hang them up in all the places where you always need a reminder that you are the best mom for your baby. There are 10 affirmation cards in this download and I'm really excited for you to get these ideas from paper into your head so that you are in a very positive space before you decide to start sleep training. Remember that no matter which of these four methods you choose, your baby will feed off of your energy. So if you are stressed out, your baby will be stressed out and it will make this process take so much longer. So without further ado, let's jump into my top four sleep training methods. Number one is assist to sleep. The only time that I really recommend using this is when your baby is younger than four months old. So this isn't necessarily considered sleep training, more or less sleep teaching. Every single time that your child goes down for a nap or bedtime, your child is learning what is expected of them and how you are going to react when they wake up. Now, of course, at a very young age, we are not sleep training. So huge disclaimer right here, I do not consider assist to sleep a sleep training method in the terms of the rest of the sleep training methods that we are going to discuss. However, a lot of parents will continue to assist to sleep as their child gets older, so it is a way that parents are teaching their children to sleep. Another time that I would encourage parents assisting their child to sleep is if you love these cuddles and holding your child and rocking your child to sleep every night, and once you transfer your baby into the crib, if he or she sleeps through the night, then there is nothing wrong with assisting to sleep. However, if your child is waking up several times throughout the night after you've assisted to sleep at bedtime, then we're gonna have to visit another one of these sleep training methods. So jumping into sleep training method number two that we're gonna talk about today is the chair in the room sleep training method. Now you've probably heard about this if you've been researching on sleep training, you've probably heard about it. I like to use this method when you have a child who may be slow to warm up. So someone who is not necessarily an easygoing baby, but they're also not an extremely difficult, clingy, cranky, crying baby all the time. I like to recommend the chair in the room method for parents who may have been co-sleeping and are trying to wean away from co-sleeping. So the gist of the chair in the room method is that when you are done with your bedtime routine, you lay your baby in the crib or their bed and you sit right next to the bed or crib. You are not assisting your baby to sleep, but you are there for emotional support. And, and if your baby really needs to be soothed, then you are there to encourage them and to soothe them and you are going to sit there until they fall asleep sleep. Now this is a method that you would need to use very minimal conversation with your child. This isn't a time to talk and sing and play and look at your phone and do all the things. It is a time to sit quietly and just wait 
Just wait it out until your child falls asleep. Now, as nights progress, you are going to move further and further away from the bed and closer to the door until you are putting your child down for bed after the bedtime routine and you are leaving the room. So this is another very gradual, very gradual sleep training method and it will take a couple weeks to see consistent progress. Now, the one thing that I see parents doing that may kind of make them fall backwards in this kind of sleep training method is staying in one place for too long. So if you choose a method like this, make sure that you are moving from the side of the crib to the middle of the room, to the door, to sitting outside the door, to sitting outside the door with the door shut. If you continue sitting in the same place for weeks and weeks at a time, you're never going to make progress. And then your child is just going to become more and more upset when you do try and move. So make sure that you do continue moving further out of the room. You always want to continue making progress. The chair in the room method is also good for parents who may not have older siblings or even younger siblings for that child that they are sleep training because whatever you do at bedtime, you also need to do at nap time. If you're also trying to sleep train naps, then you still have to use the chair in the room method for nap time. And if your child is at home with other siblings, you may not be able to use this method. However, if you have the time and the freedom to be able to sit in the room as your child falls asleep, then by all means, this may be a great method for you. So sleep training method number three that we're going to talk about today is timed check-ins. This is a very popular method, commonly talked about as the Ferber method. And I am not going to go super far in depth into what the Ferber method is and what timed checks are because you can kind of just put the pieces together. But any time that you are putting your child down to bed, leaving the room, closing the door, and then going back at a certain interval of time is going to be a timed check method. I like to recommend timed checks for babies who are a little bit older and who have developed object permanence. So around eight months old, your child develops object permanence. And this is where when you walk away, your child still knows that you exist. So at this age and beyond, using a chair in the room method may not work for your child because they may be more upset that you're sitting next to the crib rather than rocking them to sleep as you did every night before you started sleep training. So sometimes with these children, a timed check method works best. This method is also really great for those really easy going babies. They're really not thrown off very much by change and just changing up their routines at bedtime may not throw them through the loop. So if you have a very easy going child, then I definitely recommend this method. And like we were talking about with the chair in the room method, if you do have more than one child, then maybe timed checks might be better for for you. A timed check method typically takes about a week to see consistent progress, sometimes less and sometimes a little bit more. Every baby is different and as long as you're consistent, you will see success very much faster than you will with assisting your baby to sleep and also with the chair in the room method. The timed checks method is a very good solution if you kind of want like the middle of the road kind of solution. You want to be able to check on your baby, make sure everything is okay and encourage him or her that you're still there, but you don't necessarily really want to be camping out in their bedroom and you also don't want to just leave them to cry it out all night long which brings us to drum roll it brings us to the fourth sleep training method that we are going to talk about and this is the one where sleep training kind of gets a bad rap so this would be the extinction method also known as cry it out. So a lot of people hear sleep training and they automatically associate that with cry it out. But to be quite honest, I rarely ever use a full on cry it out sleep training method with my clients. The only time that I really encourage using extinction, full blown extinction, is if you have a child who is not comforted by your presence in the room and they're also not comforted when you go in to comfort them. So that is the two things that you can do while you're sleep training. You're either sitting next to your child and they are comforted by your presence or you're in and out of the room doing timed checks and they are comforted when you come in to check on them. However, there is a population of children who are not comforted by either of those things and they need to be just left alone to work it out on their own. Sometimes these babies Babies really learn to fall asleep very quickly and easily and it is not this dramatic five hour long up all night exhausting themselves to sleep type of sleep training process sometimes babies just need the space to work it out on their own get comfortable by themselves 
and fall asleep independently and they don't need any intervention. And that is perfectly fine. If that works for your baby, then I am super excited for you. Sleep training was probably really easy. But there are some children who may continue to cry for an hour or two on the first night and that's okay. If you know that comforting your child is not going to help, then this is an okay method to choose. Do not feel guilty and do not let anyone else mom shame you for choosing an extinction method if you know that this is what's best for your child and your family. You are the best mom for your baby and you know your baby best. I know I'm getting up on a pedestal right now. Is that even what it's called? Getting, getting up on a soapbox, I think is what I'm trying to say here. But honestly, just hear me out and just take my word for it. You are the best mom for your baby and you know what's best. As long as you know that your baby's needs are met and that you are loving your child unconditionally, whether they're awake or asleep and no matter how they get to sleep, you know that the sleep training method that you choose that we just talked about is right for you. Whew. Now I feel like I just talked a ton. But now I wanna give you guys a chance to talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know what sleep training method is best for your family. If you have any questions or if you're still confused and you really just don't know what sleep training method to go with, then let's chat. Fill out my free evaluation form. We will get on the phone for a 15 minute introductory call. And if you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, I have one-on-one -on -one virtual and in-home consultations. So whether or not you live near me or not, I can help you. If you're still confused about how to choose the best sleep training method, then watch this video right here where I talk all about how to decide which sleep training method is best for your family. I hope that you learned a lot from this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with any other mom and dad friends who might need a little bit more sleep in their lives and keep blooming.